Right, I think we are live, as always, with these live streams. Have I pressed the button? I have pressed the button. Let me know if you can hear me and see me okay. And welcome to my last live stream ever before I get married. And then there'll be more next week. But yes, this is the, the last live stream that I'm planning to do. Uh, we've got a whole day tomorrow planned for taking the cats to the cattery, going to the wedding venue, uh, and then meeting up with the families for food and everything else. Um, yeah, what's really weird though about tomorrow night, because Vicky's staying in a hotel with her family, is I'm coming back here after the meal and I'll be coming back here on my own. And that will be a little bit weird. <laughs> so I will, have, I will have the night here at home on my own and I'll be thinking, oh, maybe I should just do a quick live stream of Mage Night, uh, but we'll find out. Anyway, enough about that. Tonight, uh, Castles of Burgundy. Now, Castles of Burgundy is an absolute classic of a game. Uh, it is Stefan Feld's most highly rated game. It is his... When you ask people what's your favourite Stefan Feld game, Castles of Burgundy is the one that most people pick. It personally isn't my favourite one. It's one of my favourites, but it's not my favourite Stefan Feld game. Um, but anyway, Awaken Realms have done a special edition of it, which I was very surprised about when I, when I heard Awaken Realms. Wait a minute. Those people that do big miniatures and epic campaign games and things like that, and they're doing a dry, boring Euro? Wait a minute, what's going on here? But they've done a fantastic job with it. Um, this is the Royal Pledge. I did an unboxing video of it earlier on this week um, of the new edition, and it's got the Vineyards expansion in it. It's got all of the board. I mean, there's so many different player boards included in this game now. And if you want to see what board eight number, uh, board eight looks like, there you go. There's board eight for the conversation that we were having earlier on. Um, anyway, yeah, Vineyard Expansion. And we're going to be playing the new Chatoma solo mode, designed by John Albertson and Nick Shaw, with a little bit of help at the start and at the end by David Turty. I spoke to David earlier on today and he said, make sure that you give John and Nick the right credit for this, because whenever David Turty's name appears on a solo mode, most people just assume, oh, it, it's a David Turty designed solo mode. This one, David said he was involved a little bit at the start and a little bit at the end, um, but it's by John Albertson and Nick Shaw. And I'm hoping that Johnny's going to be joining us in the chat tonight. I was hoping he would, uh, because if I get anything wrong, he'll point them out. And if you know the game, if you know the solo mode of this game, if I do get something wrong, please let me know. Um, big thank you to everybody who's joined me live tonight. But if you're watching this back afterwards, I would strongly recommend turning on the subtitles, changing them to the Klingon channel, because if something gets spotted afterwards that I get wrong, I will go in and add some Klingon subtitles into the video. I'm pretty sure I get the rules right, but you know how it is with these live streams. I get all flustered and I start off well and then my brain stops working and I make lots of little mistakes. The octopus is relatively new, doesn't have a name yet, uh, but it's an octopus. So it's got to be something beginning with O. Um, I went to Ikea recently and I bought some new cuddly toys um or furry friends as i like to call them um and that's one of them so yeah that's going to be my opponent tonight we don't we don't have a name for it otto two people have suggested otto james and monica okay so otto the octopus uh, is my opponent tonight right now i'm not going to teach you how to play castles of burgundy tonight if you don't know how to play castles of burgundy you will pick it up during this playthrough but tonight my job is to teach you how the vineyards expansion works and how the shatoma uh solo mode works and we're going to start off by teaching you how the Vineyards expansion works. And I'm going to press this button here. There we go. So each player will have one of these. And you might not be able to see, but it is it is layered. If I just angle that so you get the... Uh, yeah, it is it is four layers. So each player will get one of those. It actually... It should tuck on here. It, it slots in there. But for the purposes of the layout, I found it better that it's go there. So each player starts with one of these. Also, you have six different types of grapes in the game. And you should you take you take one grape of each type, and you might be thinking, why have I only got four here? More on that later. In fact, that's the wrong one. Shouldn't be one of those. Or should it? No, no, it should. Yeah. Um, so you take take the grape tokens, and each player will get one of these at random at the start of the game. And I've taken this one. Okay, and that is a scoring tile for me at the end of the game. So I am going to gain points at the end of the game for my largest contiguous group of connected red grapes. And the points that you get is based on the triangular number sequence. So yeah, the more I get, the more points I get. I can get more bonus tokens as the game goes on. So 
I've said there's six grapes included in the game. Why have I only included four? There is a recommendation in the rulebook that when you're playing the game with fewer than four players, that you remove some of the grapes. So I've removed two of the colours of grapes. So we've only got tonight the red, the yellow, the green and the blue. And that's why I only had four tokens. So what's going to be happening in the game is we're going to be getting vineyards and we're going to be placing them onto our... Sorry, we're going to be getting vines and we're going to be placing them on our vineyard. Now, the game comes with, and I'll show you this on this camera, this is a very nice plastic stand where what you do, and I'm using the acrylic tiles tonight as well, uh, you put these in here. However, this doesn't really work when you've got an overhead camera. So with an overhead camera, you can't really use this very, very nice component. So what I've done is I've just got the tiles laid out here. Now, in a four player game, you will have six tiles, one assigned to each number. In a two and three player game, you will have one tile assigned to one and two, another tile to three and four, another tile to five and six. These dice are not included in the game, they're just my markers. And what I can do as an action on my turn is I can spend a dice of the corresponding value to take this tile. Now, what happens with this tile? It will go onto your storage area of your player board and it does take up two slots. So that's a bit of a problem. You can't have two of them. Um, and if you don't have the slots, you have to discard something, etc., etc. Anyway, like normal tile, like normally when you take tiles, you take tiles from there, you put them on here. Then what happens is, as another action, I can spend use a dice of the corresponding value to place a tile on a space. Now, the first tile you place has to be either here, which requires a four, or here, which requires a one. Let's say I use a die of value one. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put this tile on there, and I can put it either way up, which will matter later on. And you get the immediate bonuses that are covered over. So if I cover that bonus, I'm going to get two coins. If I cover that bonus, I can take a building and add it to my storage area. But either way, you put that on and you put it there like that. Now, that's not going to score me any points whatsoever, but I will score points at the end of the game based on these bonus scoring tiles. So at the moment, if I put that there and the game was to end, I score no points because I'm going to, I'm only going to get points for the red grapes. But if I was to take this tile instead and put it there, I now have a gigantic size one vineyard of red grapes. That's going to score me one point at the end of the game. But once you've got one tile on the lower level, you can now put other tiles adjacent to that one. So I don't have to finish the lower level if I want to, but what I can do is I can take this one and I can now place this either here or I can place it here or I could place it here. So as long as I place it so that one of the sides uh, is touching an existing piece, then, then that's fine. I could go there. And then my next one, if I really wanted to, I could go there. But there is a benefit to finishing off a layer. And that is whenever you finish off a layer, which on level one only requires two tiles, you get to take another of these bonus scoring tiles and you take whichever one you want to. Should there not be a vineyard that can be bought? Yes, Tim. So in addition to these, there is also, and what you're supposed to use is you're supposed to use this tile here. Now this tile or this, this cardboard tile slots into here, but remember, I'm not, I'm not using this. In fact, it's the other way up. There you go. So that goes into there like that. And what you do is in a four play game, there are three additional tiles on here. And these tiles work a little bit like the Black Depot on the main board. It costs two coins to buy a tile from here. So they can't be taken with the tiles on this board cannot be taken with dice. They can only be uh, taken with that. What's Andrew spotted? Uh, Andrew has spotted something. Let's let's scroll up. Tim says, well spotted Andrew. Oh, it's the black tile market. Yes. And on the other side of this tile, which is what you use in a two and three player game, there are three spaces with three players. And there is only one space with two players. Now we're playing the solo game tonight and we're playing the solo game with the Chateauma. Now, the reason why I'm mentioning that is the Chateauma can actually be used to increase the player count. So if you were playing a two player game with two real people, you could add in the Chateauma uh, as a third player. And if you're playing a three player game, you can add it in as a fourth player. So it is a dummy opponent that you can add to any player count. In a two player game, in other words, me plus Otto, um, there is only one tile. So instead of putting it on here and putting this somewhere, I've decided that I'm gonna put it there because this tile can be bought 
with two silver. Now, there is one rule that I do need to check. Because this technically isn't part of the Black Depot, it shouldn't be there, it should be on its own area. I think I can spend, if I had four silver, for example, I think I can buy one of those and I can buy that. I think so. Right, anyway, what else do, anyway, do I need to explain about the, uh, the vineyard? There's lots and lots of bonuses on here. A lot of these icons are icons that we've seen before or you will have seen before on other things in the game. There are some new ones. This white dice here means that you can perform an action immediately with whatever the value for the white dice is. Now, normally the white dice is rolled at the start of each round and then you don't use it again. Well, this action allows you to take another action, but with the value of the white dice. There is also over here a red die. That means you can take another action with a value of anything you want to. It's basically the same as placing a castle. Other than that, all of the rest of the icons, I think, are icons that we already know, apart from this one, maybe. This one allows you to trade goods. But yeah, that's uh, that's that. Have I mentioned everything to do with the vineyards? Those tiles and this tile are gone at the end of the round and replaced with new ones. And as I've mentioned, I'm only playing with four colours of grapes instead of six. So in the, in the vine tiles bag, there are a lot less tiles than there would be for a three and a four player game. Right. That's that done. Now to explain how the Shatoma works. So what we have is we have three different difficulty settings to start with. I'm going to be playing on the middle difficulty setting today. But in addition to that, there are a whole bunch of difficulty modifiers that you can use to adjust the game. And if you're playing on midway, you're supposed to use one of the following modifiers as well. I'm not doing that tonight. I'm just going to play on the midweight difficulty with none of the modifiers. But just to let you know, you can customize this game quite a bit um, to suit your particular difficulty level. And the solo mode does work with the vineyards expansion. <laughs> you can play without the vineyards or you can play with the vineyards. The difference is these cards. So these are a set of um, county cards and if you're not playing with vineyards you want to use numbers one to nine if you're playing with vineyards you use number one and numbers 10 to 17. And what you do at the start of the game is you give these a shuffle and what we have here is we have otto's duchy so this is otto's duchy he starts with one trade good of each type already on his board uh, he has an area here called the reserve we'll come on to that later on and he's got an area here which kind of represents a player's player board. But what's going to happen is he's going to be taking um, building tiles and everything else. And he's going to be placing them onto county cards. And when the county card is full, he will score the points and then the tiles will be moved up to here. So what we do at the start of the game is we're going to pick one of these at random and we're going to place it in the leftmost slot. It doesn't have a burgundy hex on it. So we ignore that one and draw another one, which also doesn't have a burgundy hex on it. And so does that one. And we keep going. Oh, hey, we found one. Right. So that's that one. Then we shuffle the remaining eight tiles together. Okay. And we do that one. Okay. The rest of the cards are supposed to go in this slot here. But because of the layout that I've chosen, I'm just going to put them off camera there. So what's going to happen on the, and let's just press this button here to zoom in on that player board. So what we've got is we've got um, this, what did I call them? Counties. We've got this county here and this county here. Now, when the white dice is rolled at the start of the round, if it's a one to four, you place it here. If it's a five or six, you place it here. So this is the main uh, I keep wanting to call it sectors. I've been playing too much Voidfall recently. This is the main county that it wants to try and ac accomplish. So let's say, for example, we roll a two. That means this is the county that it's going to want to concentrate on. And then the Automa, Otto, or Shatoma, has a one dice. And what you're going to do is you're going to roll that dice, and that's going to tell it which of the depots on the main board to look at. So it tries to fill this, it tries to look for a mine first, because that's in the top left. It goes in reading order, and it's going to look in depot five. So it will be depot five. Is there a mine there? There is a mine there, so it will take the mine, and it only gets one action a turn. But with that one action, it takes and places. 
Now, mines don't have any immediate placement bonus, but some of the other ones will do. Let's say, for example, it wanted to do that and there was not a mine there. We would look at that depot again. Is there a castle? No, there isn't a castle. Is there a monastery? Yes, there's a monastery. So we take the monastery instead. So what happens is it goes to this depot number and it looks for that, then it looks for that, then it looks for that. If it can't find any of them in that depot, it will then go to the next depot clockwise and it will have a look again. And it will keep going around until it finds one of those three tiles. If it can't find one of those, then it will look in its reserve. So its reserve is kind of a little bit like your own storage area where it will go here if it can't find a tile. We'll, we'll cover that in more detail when it happens, but I'll let you know in my playthrough this afternoon, it didn't happen at all. He was putting tiles in to his reserve, but he was never actually needed to take them out because he always managed to find what he was looking for. We will find out tonight whether that actually, um, whether that happens the same. Right. Now, at the end of the game, he's going to score. Oh, sorry. If any of these fill up, so once you've fulfilled a, uh, filled a particular county, then what happens is he scores the points, whether you're playing easy, medium or hard, that card will then disappear. Things slide to the left and then we get a new card. So he's going to be going through these counties and you transfer the tiles onto this board here. And when a whole section is filled up, that's when he gets these bonus tiles. So he never scores points for completed regions like a human player will. But what he will do is he's tracking how many he's got of each type. And when it's filled, he will get he will get the bonus tiles. We'll explain a little bit more about that as it goes on. He will also, if he's got two silver, he will always buy a tile at the end of his turn and he will prioritize this one. He will always buy that first. And his vineyards, he, well, his vine tiles, he doesn't have a vineyard of his own. Sad. Um, but he's going to get points at the end of the game simply based on how many tiles he's collected. And that's on exactly the same point sequence. And in the last game I played this afternoon, I think he managed to collect nine tiles over the course of the game which was 45 points. I didn't win the game this afternoon, so wish me luck. We're going to we're going to try again now. I think that's probably enough to get started with. Let's jump in. I've done most of the setup. In fact, I think I've pretty much done all of the setup. Yeah, so the game plays over five phases, A, B, C, D and E. We are in phase A and each phase is divided into five rounds. So we have 25 rounds in total during the game, but something happens at the end of each phase and then we reset the board for the next phase. So what's going to happen is I'm going to roll my two dice and I'm going to roll the white dice because I am the start player. That isn't decided randomly. That's in the rules. The human player always starts. Um, you don't roll uh, Otoma's dice uh, until it's his turn. So the first thing to do is we've rolled a five. That means the white dice goes there. That is the county that Otto is going to focus on. And also this trade good is going to go on depot number five. Then I have my dice. I have my three and my six, and then it is my turn. So again, if you don't know how to play castles of Burgundy, you basically get two actions a turn. I use this dice, which is value three. I use this dice, which is value six. I forgot, but I start with one worker. So as the first player in the game, I start with one worker. Um, Otto doesn't use workers, never needs workers. So doesn't actually start with any. But that's where the uh, first player advantage comes in in the multiplayer game. The second player would have two workers, third player, three workers. Yeah, starting castles. Thank you. That is already filled. I did forget. That. Thank you very much, Andrew. Um, this, again, if you simulate a, a human player's player board, he's already got a castle on there. And I need to choose where I'm going to start. So this should have been before I rolled my dice. Uh, now, I went there this afternoon and it didn't work out for me. So I'm going to do something different and we're going to start here. And again, I'm using the, the, the miniatures for it. Hey, Joshua, good to see you. Yeah, shame I can't be at Gen Con, but I've got a wedding to go to instead. So, <laughs> so yes, we've got our starting castles and right off we go. So I've got a three and a six. And basically there's multiple things you can do with the actions. You can take tiles from the board. You can place tiles from your storage onto your player board. Uh, you can sell goods. I can take a vineyard tile. There's all sorts of different things I can do. One thing I will tell you though, um, and this is from the designers themselves, and this applies not just to the solo game, but this applies to a multiplayer game too. If you let one player romp ahead and get loads of vineyards and don't put any competition for it, they will very likely win. 
So you cannot just say, oh, I'm going to ignore vineyards. I'm not going to bother doing them because then the other player will just score a massive amount of points. Um, so I need to be concentrating. I'm going to do a bit of the vineyards because I kind of want to explore them a bit more. And we do have a six. So that will allow us to take this one, which has a red grape. And I'm going to score for red grapes. So I think, I mean, what else can I take with a six? I always like getting mines early. One of my initial strategies that I like to do in this game is get mines early. But with this player board, which I've chosen at random, uh, my starting castle position is not next to any mines. So that's going to be a bit tricky. Now, I am next to that and that. So what could I take with three? I could take some some goats. Now, I am I am going to take this. I'm going to spend my six and I'm going to take this tile. So that's going to go in there. Um, and I can't place it because it's a three and I need either a four or a one to place it. I could use my worker, but at this stage in the game, when we're still at the early stages, I think I'm probably just going to use the three to take one of these two. Now, I am going to need animals. Or I could sell. Now, what I'm thinking about is this is this is a goat, this is cows, and that's cows. And I know that this is the county card that Otto is interested in, and he's going to take a building before he takes uh, any livestock. So right now, he's not that int He's probably not going to take an animal tile. So I think what I'm going to do. Oh, but then that means. I think I'm going to change my mind. I'm going to change his mind already. Okay. So. I'm going to use the six. Now, I need to remind myself what those buildings do. That is the warehouse, which is sell any particular type of good. Hmm. That would get me the two silver that I need to take the animal, because I want this. If I take the cows and the other cows, that's a good early start on cows. So, yeah, I think I'm going to do it. I'm going to use the six and I'm actually going to take these animals here. So they go down there. Then I've got the three. This is what I love about this game is these micro decisions that you have to make every single turn are really important. So this is the carpenters. Carpenter's Workshop, which allows me to take a building tile. I could take that. I haven't got a good... You, you start the game with three random goods, so I can't sell unless I use the worker. So I think I'm just going to take the Carpenter's Workshop. I think I'm just going to have a nice, easy first turn, taking two tiles, and... Yeah. Uh, Matthias is asking, is the building on one from the base game, or is it a castle? Uh, the building on one. This one. This is a white castle. So... In addition to all of the other stuff that comes with this version, there are some uh, lots of little expansions as well. And I'm playing with the White Castle expansion. So there are a number of these in the game. It's a different type of building. And whenever you build it, you get to perform the action of the white die. That's what it does. So yeah, I played with it this afternoon accidentally. And I thought, oh, that's quite fun. So we're using it. Right, that's my turn over. So now we go over to Ottoman. What we do is we roll the dice. And it's a five. So we look at the board here, and the first thing is building. So we go to depot or depot number five. Is there a building? No, there isn't a building. So we go to the next one. Is there a building? No, there isn't a building. Is there livestock? No, there isn't livestock. Is there a boat? No, there isn't a boat. So we now go to the next depot. Is there a building? Yes, there's a building. So he takes the building and he puts it straight onto there. Now, some of the buildings have initial benefits, and that is... Yeah, that is the warehouse. So what he does is he sells goods. Now, whenever he sells goods, uh, he sells the one that he's got the most of. But in this case, he's got one of everything. So he just sells the leftmost one. And he's going to get one silver for that. And he's going to get two points. So he's already winning. Um, hi, Chris. Good to see you. Thank you very much for popping in. Yes, beautiful day. I mean, it'll be a beautiful day for both of us. It might not be a beautiful day weather-wise. <laughs> We're having three weeks of rain at the moment in the UK. But that's just how it is. Anyway, so that's the immediate placement bonus for that. He's he sold a good. At the end of his turn, he's got two coins. So he spends them and he buys this. If this wasn't there, he would be basically buying tiles from here into his reserve. 
uh, but he would only buy tiles that he needs. So if he's already got a particular tile in here, he wouldn't buy another one. Anyway, he's got some uh, he's got some grapes. That is the end of his turn, and that is the end of the first round. Yeah, might as well give in. Thanks very much for watching. I'll see you all next week. No, <laughs> I'm going to try my best. So round two. It's a five again, and I've rolled a five and a four. So this goes here. It's looking quite tasty. Um, and it's now my go. So I think I can do this. I, can, I think I can do the thing that I was going to do. So I'm going to use the five to place these cows into here. Now, that scores me three points immediately because it's for cows in that particular pasture. Then what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the four to sell this trade good. So I'm going to just kind of pop that there. That gets me one coin and two points. Winning. And then I am going to spend those two coins and I am going to buy this set of cows there. Right, okay. Uh, thank you very much, Paul. It's not tomorrow, it's Friday. The wedding is on Friday. Tomorrow is the final preparation day where we get everything ready, put the cats into the cattery and everything else. But yeah, Friday is the big day. Right, I think I'm done. I've used my two actions and I've bought a tile from the Black Depot. So now we go over to Otto. And Otto wants to take a building and I'm going to explain what this black double hex is on here. So he's starting off at Depot 1. Is there a building? Yes, there's a building. So two things happen now. What we're doing is we're placing this white castle onto here, which means he's going to get a bonus for placing a white castle, but we're also placing it on here. And what that means is he's going to take one of these tiles based on the value of the white dice. So that goes on there. The white dice is five, which means it takes that one. If that one was empty, it would cycle round and go to the next one. So he's got two vine tiles in his vineyard already. Now the white castle bonus for the Automa is... It takes a tile from the board and places it in its reserve, uses the value on the white dice to determine the starting depot and takes a tile of the type that it doesn't have. So it's basically going to depot number five and it's trying to take a castle if it can. No, nope, a mine. Yes. So it's taking it and it's going in its reserve. So it's not actually placing it on a board here. It's just putting it in there. Uh, player order change. Player order doesn't change until you use boats to move up on the turn order track. So at the moment, I am the first player because I'm on top. Um, and yeah, whenever you place a boat on your board, you will move that marker up. Will we add some rules references to our wedding vows? We really should have done. <laughs> yeah, we really, really should have done, shouldn't we? So, uh, right. Okay. Um, so he's done that. He's taken the vineyard tile and it's reserved. And mine. So that's it. That's it. it's turn done. If I wasn't chatting to everybody watching and explaining what was happening, you could probably play a solo game of this in about an hour. I think. I don't know. Uh, if you've played the solo mode, let me know. Uh, let me know how long it takes you to play. Right, round three. It's a one. I've rolled a one and a six. So this is going on here. And we don't know what the Ottoma is doing now. So I've got that. I've got me. I've got me two cow tiles. I'm happy with that. Um, and I can use the one or the six to place it if I really want to. What else is happening? I mean, I do like to take these castle tiles from here because they're quite rare. But so the one or the six is good for placement. I could take a boat. Could take a boat. The six is nothing over there. So I'm going to use the six to place this set of cows. Now, what that does, that gets me six points because there are now six cows in the field. Six points. Done. With the one, do I take the boat? Or do I take that vineyard? I mean, that vineyard isn't worth anything to me at the end of the game. But assuming I am going to get another bonus tile, it could actually be worth something. And we do need to do a bit of vineyard tile. So I am going to spend the one. I'm going to take this vineyard tile. That is it. That is my go. Done. Okay.
Auto Mer. Doesn't the bot earn coins when it sells goods? It does, and it, it sold a good, and it earned a coin, and then it spent its two coins and bought a title. Depot number three. So we're looking for mines and then monasteries, and we're going to start at depot number three. Mine or monastery? No. Mine or monastery? No. Mine or monastery? Yes. So it takes the monastery and it puts it there. Now, monasteries are the tiles which give you a special ability, which is going to affect the entire game for you. For the Automa, or sorry, for Automa, um, simply it's going to get four points for every tile it's got at the end of the game. So those tiles score nothing right now. They don't do anything right now, but at the end of the game, it's very simply just four points for each tile. And that's it. That's its go done. There was no special ability. It's not finished the county. It doesn't have two coins. So that's it. End of the round. Nice and easy. Round four. It's another five. I do like rolling these fives, don't I? Which means that is going there. So there's three goods there. Oh, that's tasty. That's very tasty. Um, I might try and grab a boat and place a boat because grabbing those is quite good. Um, yeah, because it's probably going to take a boat. If I don't, we know that it's using this county card. And if it rolls a four, five, six or a one, it's going to grab a boat. So I think I need to grab a boat and I have two fours. So I'm going to grab a boat with a four. Hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. Hang on a minute. I don't have space. Aha! I'm going to place this. So I'm going to place this on here and I need a four to do that. So I am going to spend a four and I'm going to place it. I'm going to place it that way up. So I'm going to get myself four workers and I get to take either a boat or a livestock tile. So that's gone on there like that. And guess what? I'm going to take a boat. And then what I'm going to do, I think, is I'm going to place that boat there. So when you place a boat, you move up one on the turn order and you take all of the goods from one depot of your choice. I'm going to take all of those. Now, thankfully, I have space for all of them because you can stack goods of the same type together. So there you go. So that's um, that's my turn done. OK, so Ottoma. It's a six, so it's going to depot number six. And it's looking for livestock or boats. Livestock or boats? No. Livestock or boats? No. Livestock or boats? No. Livestock or boats? Yes. So it's taking the two goats. Now, whenever it takes livestock, it doesn't just score points for the similar livestock on the county card. It scores for livestock wherever it's got them. So it just scores two points for that. But it's now collecting goats and we'll get points for all of them. Oh, I should get four workers. Thank you. I did forget. There you go. Right. We got our four workers. Yes, because that was the bonus for that. Right. Is that it? I think that's it. Doesn't have two coins. Right. Round five. The final round for phase A. Is it another five? It's not. It's a four. I've rolled a five and a six. So this is going here. And now it's my go. Do we have a plan? Well, I'm a bit full on here. We can't take another one of those unless we use our workers. Which I could do. I absolutely could do that. I can't believe I'm letting a castle go. But needs must. I'm going to have to use workers anyway at some point. Yeah. So. Hmm. OK. I mean, I don't need to. I could, I could let them go. We'll let them go for a turn. So I'm going to use the six to trade these two goods. So you can sell all goods of the same type. So I'm selling those two. It gets me one silver and four points. OK, right. Then 
we've got the five. I'm thinking of placing this. I mean, there's so many different options in this game. As soon as you've got lots of workers, you have so much mitigation of the dice. Um, you can do whatever you want, but I think I'm just going to use the five and I'm going to place this in here. Now, for those of you that don't know the game, your light brown areas are divided into towns. This particular board only has two towns. They are very big towns, but you cannot have two of the same building in the same town. So on this board with two very large towns, it's tricky. You've got to really be careful. Anyway, I'm putting a carpenter's workshop there. The special ability of that is I take another building. You can never take from the depot unless a special ability allows you to do that. So I'm going to take this tower, put it down there. That is the end of my turn. I don't have two coins. So that's it. That's it for me. Right, Ottoman. Uh, six. So it's basically, right. Ah, we are going to have it. It is going to use its reserve. So here's how it works. It's going to go to depot number six and it's looking for a mine. Is the one there? No. Is the one there? No. It goes all the way around. It doesn't find one. So I'm just going to double check this in the rules because this didn't happen this afternoon. If it can't find any match, then there are four different possibilities of things that it will do. And you do the first one that you can. And it is if it has a tile in its reserve area that matches any empty space on the selected county card, starting from the top left one, it takes that one. So that's what it does. It goes to its reserve because it wants a mine. It doesn't have one available. So it goes and grabs this one and puts it there. No immediate placement bonus for mines, but it's now completed this card. So what we do is we score the 12 points as shown. If you can just see it, 12 points there because we're playing on the medium difficulty level. So that goes there, that goes there, that goes there. And that county card is done. That gets discarded. We don't need that anymore. We slide these to the left and then we draw a new one. There you go. That's how that works. And remember, when it fills up one of these, that's when it gets the bonus tiles. Right. Does it have two coins? No. That is, I believe, <coughs> the end of the round. Sorry, the end of the phase. Well, it's the end of the round. It's also the end of the phase. I've not missed anything, have I? I don't think I've missed anything. No. Right. So we clear the board of any tiles that were left and any of these vine tiles that are left so they all disappear we don't need those um goods stay so any goods that were there stay and now we repopulate the board with new things based on the colors right so we need two more monasteries otto needs 12 points did i not give me 12 points i didn't give me 12 points <laughs> there you go that's that's my plan for winning is actually to tell him yeah, you're going to score 12 points, mate. Yeah, just look over there and then not move the 12 points. Thank you for spotting these things because I will uh, I will forget it was 12 points yet. Yeah. yeah, I've been learning sneaky plans from um, from the cats. The cats have been teaching me how to be how to be sneaky recently. And how to catch birds as well. at that two red grapes oh lots and lots of red grapes this turn right what else do we need we need some buildings another white castle and what do we need over there animals come on cows Uh, you're asking me if the um, Ottoman gets the 10 points for finishing it in phase A. No, that, that only applies to completing regions on here. The points they get for completing the county cards is simply the points printed on it and nothing more. Also at the start of the round, one silver per mine. We've both got one mine. Uh, now, I assume that's right. I'm hoping that John's in the chat. John's not in the chat. Um, but yeah, we, I couldn't find anywhere in the rule book where it says uh, that the Automa gets a coin for a mine at the start of its turn. So if you if you know the game or uh, if you know the answer to that question, let me know. But I'm going to play it that as long as uh, the Automa has got a mine, it is going to get a coin at the start of the round. So yeah, let me know if that is not true. Um, and if it's not true, I will put some Klingon subtitles on screen now. But that, that's the way I'm going to play it. 
Do I have a mine? I don't have a mine. I'm totally cheating. I thought I had a mine. <laughs> yes, thank you very much, chat. De definitely, definitely keeping me honest. Lots of comments of, does Paul have a mine? No, I don't. I just thought I did, because every time I play this game, the first thing I try and do is get a mine out. Right, and then we go into phase B. So we lay these out, and we do five rounds again. Have we done everything? We've set everything up. Uh, yeah, I think we've set everything up. And it's me first, because I'm still ahead on the turn order track. Big numbers. Six, six, five. So this is going here. And off we go. Nobody in the chat's telling me whether he should or shouldn't get a silver. I mean, we could ping John on Slack. If somebody wouldn't mind just pinging John Albertson on the Gaming Rules Slack channel and just asking him, uh, does the Automa get a silver for a mine that they own? He will know the answer. He will know the answer. Uh, oh, he gets a coin for each mine on county cards and on his player board, not for mines in his reserve. Thank you very much, Tobias. We don't need to ping John. We, we have an answer. Um, whereabouts is that in the rule book? Maybe, maybe I just, maybe I missed it. Let me know where it is. Anyway, it's my go, and we definitely want some of these. Um, because I'm going to get points for red. Hmm. But I can't take one of those with what I've got. Oh, have we got any cows? There's some cows. Cows have appeared on six. He might take those. He's probably going to take a building. And we've got th positions for three boats here. And this is why I like playing this online, because you can spend five minutes just analysing your turn and working out what the best thing is to do. Whereas when you're playing this with other players, eh, it's not so, not so good to do that. So... Yeah, I mean, I can take the mine. I could just take it and put it here, ready for getting to it. And I think that's what we might do. I mean, there's so many things you want to do in this game, and you're not going to fill your board. That's the thing that you, you definitely need to decide what you're going to do. You know, am I going to? I'm, I'm going to try and finish this town. Whether I finish this town, I don't know. I think. We're going to leave the vineyards for a turn and we're going to use a five and a six and we're going to take the mine and we're going to take the cows. Rightly or wrongly, that's what I'm going to do. Right, OK, what is Otto going to do? Otto is going to depot number five. Oh, Thor's come in. Hello, Thor. Expect wailing noises because he's just realised he's shut in and he can't get out. Um, and you're going on holiday tomorrow morning, Thor. Yes, holiday. Oh, he loves going on holiday. No, he doesn't. Right, depot number five. And he's wanting first a building. Is there a building? No. Building castle, building livestock boat. No. Yes. So he takes the building, he puts it on there, and he does an immediate action, because it's a white castle, of taking a tile from the board and placing it in his reserve. So... The value on the white dice to determine the starting depot. Starting depot is six, nothing in there. Then it goes to one out of the boat or the building. If we follow these through, the building. So he takes that building and he puts it on there. Bottom of page 23, mines. Thank you very much, Andrew. But so I knew it would be in there somewhere. I just couldn't find it when I was looking earlier on. So I think it's done that. It takes the tile of a type it doesn't have in its reserve, prioritising the leftmost type if tied. Yeah, OK, there you go. So it's done that. It took that, it put it there, it doesn't have two silver, so it didn't buy something, and that's it. Next round. Big numbers again. What is it with these dice? Fives all round. Starting at three or six o'clock seems a lot stronger than nine or twelve on this map. Who knows? <laughs> Who knows? Um, right, okay, so we've done that, we've done that, we've done that, and it's my go. So I've got fives, all the fives. That's really not good. Fives is rubbish. 
Where can I complain? Hmm, it's going to cost me a lot of workers. I mean, I do have the workers. I just don't like spending that many workers. It's going to cost me three to do what I want to do. Yeah, that's quite painful, isn't it? Um, I mean, I could change a five into a one. Still going to cost me, still going to cost me two. It's going to cost me two workers, whether I put it there or there. Um, so, yeah, I think I'm going to do it. I'm going to spend the two workers to turn a five into a three in order to place the cows there, which gets me eight points. I've got 23. Now, with my next five, I could place the mine. I could absolutely place the mine. I can't take any of these yet. So, yeah, we're, we're going to use the five. We're going to turn it into a six with another worker. And we're going to place the mine there. No immediate placement bonus, but now I am going to get that coin at the start of each round. Okay, and now we've got room for a vine for next round. <laughs> Time is ticking away. Right, okay. We have rolled a five again. And what is it with me tonight? Just rolling fives. So we're going for castle building livestock boat. Starting at five. Castle building livestock boat. No. Castle building livestock boat. No. Castle building livestock boat. No. no. Castle. Yes. So it takes this castle. And it puts it on there. So I'm going to remove that from the game and give it one of those nice buildings. Uh, now, whenever it takes and places a castle, it gets an immediate extra turn. Oh, there he is. He's off. Um, and the extra turn is based on it just takes an additional action. And I think it doesn't say it on the reference sheet, but I think it's based on the white dice. Yeah, the white dice. Select a start. So we basically it gets another entire action and it's using the white dice. So we start at five building livestock boat. No, no. Yes. So it stops here. And it takes the boat because there's no building or livestock there or there. So it gets to here, places the boat on here and it takes a vineyard. And its vineyard is based on the white dice, which is that one. And it goes there. Right. Okay. Yeah. It's how it goes. Next round. I'm still first. He doesn't take the castle. Does he not take the castle? Mark is saying he doesn't take the castle. Uh when? <laughs> when are you watching, Mark? Because I've just taken the boat. It was a couple of minutes ago when he took the castle. And I don't know why he doesn't take the castle, because the boat was available before the castle. Sorry, you're right. Yeah, when I was going round here, I skipped there, didn't I? I got that wrong. Thank you very much. So we're going to undo that, and we're just going to put that back, and instead it just takes the boat. So we fixed it by just putting the castle back there. Yes. Yes, because we were on this dice, weren't we? I think we were on that dice. Have I done it right? He should have taken the boat first time round. Okay, so we've done it. He's taken the boat. Right, thank you. Yeah, it's been a long day. It's been a long week. <laughs> so when he takes a boat, he moves up on the turn order track, which means he's now going to be the first player. And he takes uh, from the depot, all of the goods from the depot with the most goods. If it's a tie, which it is... Um, takes the goods from the first tied depot from the white dice values. So the white die is five, so he takes that one. So he takes those goods, and that is it. That is the end of that round. So we go to the next round, but this time Otto is going first. Apologies for that. Don't know what I was thinking. I was, I was trying to be careful and methodical as well. Um, so he's going on there. I've rolled his dice because it's his turn first. So he's trying to take a boat. And he's going to start at depot one but it doesn't actually matter where he starts because there is only one boat available it goes on there he takes uh, all of the goods from the depot with the most goods starting at two if it's tied and going clockwise to there so he takes that one 
Uh, he's also moving up on the turn order track. He's also taking a vineyard. So he takes that one. Ouch. I mean, it's, my, it's down to me. You know, I made the decisions. Uh, I chose not to take them. And all the good ones have gone. Yeah. Rats. So yeah, I can't take the double red because unfortunately he's taken it. And then this is complete. So he scores 18 points, putting him on 34. Uh, and that has gone. So we've got two buildings up there. We've got some livestock. We've got a boat. That tile, that card is done. This one slides down. We get a new one in here. Right. I think he's done. He doesn't have two coins. So that's the end of his turn. My go, I've got a two and a three. Now, I need to get in with these vineyards, don't I? I can't, I can't just keep delaying this any longer. So I am going to use the three to buy this vineyard. And can I place it with the two? Well, if I, if I make it a one with the worker or three with that, I could. I could, but I'm not in any rush to place it. Maybe I'll do something else. Like place this watchtower. But there's nowhere that I can place that without spending workers. We could sell a good. We could sell this. Hmm. What are we going to do? What are we going to do? I think I'm just going to sell a good. So I'm going to sell that good, which gets me one coin and two points. <clears throat> and I'm going to save me silver for now because I've uh, I'm all full. Right. Did I forget to place the good out? I think I forgot to place the good out. At the start of the at the start of this round, I think, and please somebody correct me if I'm wrong, I think I forgot to place that out because it's a two and there was nothing here. So that should be there. Although did he take a boat? He took a boat, didn't he? Hmm. No, what did he do? He did something and finished a tile. The boat was there last round. So what, what has he done? He finished this and I can't remember what he finished this with. Yeah, my brain stopped working. Apologies for this. I might just have to quickly look back at my own video just to see exactly what... He what he did last turn uh let's have a look let's just scroll back a few minutes there you go so he did that and what did he put on there what did he put on to finish it i think he put the boat on yeah he put the boat on this turn and i moved him up the turn order track and he took a vineyard. And he also, did we give him a good? I don't think we gave him a good, or did we? Yeah, let's see. Let's see what people are saying. He finished it with the boat. Yes. So earlier this round, he finished that with a boat. But I think I think I forgot to put that good in there. That's that's the question uh, that I'm asking. So I'm just going to scroll back to the start of the round when we rolled the dice. Apologies for this. Yeah. So here's me. I'm rolling the dice. And I didn't put the good out. So I, I definitely didn't put the good out. I just put the dice on there. I did that and then we looked at it and I looked at that and he's taking a boat and he's now taking a boat and he goes around to there and he takes it and he puts it on there and did I get him to take any of the goods whatsoever yes he took he took this one and he shouldn't have taken this one there you go right apologies for that so we're just putting that back and we're giving him that one instead right I knew tonight was going to be a, a bit messy because, yeah, I've been quite frazzled this week. So apologies for that. But the important thing is I think I've corrected it. And I put that out and that's the good that he got. And then I've taken my go. 
And that is the end of the round. Okay, so next round. He's still going first. Put the good out first, Paul. I've rolled a three with the white dice. So yeah, let's do that first. Then put that on there. Then put that on there. Then put those on there. Right, okay, we're back. Um, what's he going to do? Well, he wants to take a castle. It's castle building livestock, starting at depot three. So castle building livestock. Building. Let's make sure I'm getting it right. Am I getting it right? Yes. It's his turn. We've put that out. We've done that. So it's taking this building. It's putting it out there. Now this has got another icon on. This is the trading goods. So what it's going to do is it's actually going to, it's going to trade goods at the end of its turn. But first of all, we're putting the building on there. Now that is the banker and it gets two silver for that. So it actually gains two silver for placing the banker or the bank. And then it's going to trade goods. It's going to trade the goods that it's got the most of. It's got two of those, two of those. So it trades these. Four points and another silver. Uh, one, two, three, four. Right. And then at the end of its turn, it has two silver. So it definitely buys this. It's got five of them already. I'm not going to win this. I can tell you now. I am not going to win this, but I instantly want to play it again. <laughs> Because <laughs> I'm learning so much about, about this game. Right, it's finished. My go. I've got a two and a four. So, what are we going to do? Is this any good to me whatsoever? Uh, <laughs> see, now there's the tricky situation of do I wait for that fourth set of cows to turn up? And they might not even turn up. Anyway, we're full. We've got a two and a four. We have two workers. So I could, I could put this out. And there's all sorts of stuff here. So I could use a worker to put it there and start off on that layer. That gives me, get, that gives me to trade a good. Then we can start buying some extra stuff. Maybe that's what I'll do. Okay, I'm going to do it. I'm going to use a two. I'm going to use a worker to make it into a three. And I am going to place this vine tile. And we're going to place it on my second layer. So we're going to place it here because that needs a three. I can put it any way I want, but I'm actually going to put it that way. Um, because then I might be able to get a set of yellows there. So I get two bonuses. I get to trade any goods. And I get to take either a yellow, red or grey tile and place it into my storage. So that's going to go there. Trade goods, I trade these, gets me one silver and four points. And I now take either a castle, a monastery or a mine. I was gonna, I was gonna use that, wasn't I? So I could take the castle tile, can't take a mine, could take a monastery, but no, I'm gonna take a castle tile. So I'm gonna put that there. I'll turn it into a, 3D castle once I place it on my board. Okay, so that was the three. Well, that was the two that I've turned into a three. So now we have a four. So I could just place this. I think that's what I'm going to do. I'm just going to use that four to place this watchtower there, which gets me an immediate four points, which is the benefit of the watchtower. Now, at the end of my turn, I have three silver. So do I want to buy something or do I want to save it? I'm tempted to save it. I might buy this next time. Yeah, I'm going to save it. Right, next round. And this is the last round of phase two. Otto is still going first. It's a three. So again, first thing, remember to do it. Let's put that there. Thor, come here, you. Oh, he's so sad. Come here. Come on. No, you don't want to be on camera. Come here. No, he's very shy. So, um, Otto is going first. I don't know if Otto should have bought a tile at the end of his turn. Maybe he did. Maybe he did. But he's going to buy another one at the end of this turn. So we're looking at Depot 1. 
and we're looking for castle and livestock. Castle and livestock, no. Castle and livestock, no. Castle and livestock, yes. So livestock goes in there. That is pigs. That is his first pigs. So he scores two points. And then at the end of his turn, he does spend the two silver. He buys the vineyard tile from there if there was one. There wasn't one. So he's going to go and see what he can buy uh, from the reserve. Uh, sorry, from the Black Depot and puts it in his reserve. I think that's right. Purchasing Black Depot tiles. Attempt to purchase a tile it doesn't have in the reserve, prioritising the topmost leftmost. So, yeah, is there a castle in the Black Depot? No. Is there a mine? No. Is there a monastery? Yes. So it will take that one and it puts it in his reserve. That's it. Okay. Brian is saying, buy yellow and place it for eight points. Which one? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's completing one of the areas, yeah, is, is a thing. Um, I was going to see if I could try and do this. But I... No, I... Oh, mm, no, I can't. No, I can't do that. So, yeah, that is an option. That is option. Just basically take that monastery, put it there. Uh, and it won't be eight points. It'll be nine points because it's a size one region. And it does give me an ability once per round... Uh, that I can spend two workers to take a building tile. That might be quite useful if I had enough workers. But I don't quite have enough workers. But I think based on what's what's going on, I think that might be the best move. The other option is that I spend the two silver now and buy this white castle, then use the five to place the white castle there and get an action based on the yellow dice, which is a three. And I use the three to, yeah, yeah, don't know. <laughs> Take two workers. Yeah, three is not a good action right now. I would have loved a boat, but somebody stole all of the boats from me early on. Okay, we're going to do it. So we'll use the five to take this monastery, put it in there, then we'll use the three. Place the monastery there. That is a size one region completed on phase B. Nine points. There you go. Right. Now I could buy something. And I think I'm going to. I'm going to spend two coins and I'm going to buy this white castle. And that's it. That is the end of the second phase of the game. So we're going to clear anything that wasn't taken. Wow, a lot got taken this turn. And now we're going to replenish. So, castle. Two boats. Um, a mine. We need a couple of monastery tiles. Oh, that's a good one for me. That means I can have buildings of the same type in a city. We need two livestocks. Cows, four of them. Nice. So one's going to go on there, one on there, one on there. We're not really doing as much with the vineyards as I would have liked. Oh, I need to clear the black market too. Thank you. Lots of stuff in the black market. What else do we need? Buildings. One, two, three, and four. Right. I think we're all set up. We've done that. We've done that. We've done that. He has one mine. I have one mine. Okay, off we go. Next set of tiles. And he's going first. So I'm going to roll all the dice. So the white is a two, which means that is going there. And I've rolled a two and a five. Okay, so first of all, he's looking at depot two. Is there a castle? Yes, there is. So he takes the castle. He puts it on there. All sorts of things happen, but this doesn't go up there until later in his turn. So what happens is he's now going to take a bonus action of two but looking at this, um, this county. 
I think that's right. I think that's what it says. I think it says castle. Using the white dice says let's start in deeper. If he's just completed the chosen county card, triggering this bonus, it will then try to place a bonus hex on the other county card if it can. So it's looking for animals on the white dice, which is a two. So animals, no. Building, no. Monasteries, yes. So it takes a monastery, it puts it there, it trades goods. So it's trading those two goods. It gets one silver. It gets four points. One, two, three, four. Okay. Then we've completed this. So it scores 21 points. And things move up there. So buildings and the boat. There we go. That's that card done. That one slides to the left. That goes in. At the end of its turn, it has two coins. So it's going to buy this. Oh dear, dear, dear. <laughs> it's got so many of them already. And we're only, we're not even halfway through the game yet. It's got loads of them. Right. My go. This is where I need to start playing better. I've got a two and a five. I'm looking at the vineyard tiles. I'm not seeing anything particularly great. The acrylics are great. Yeah, the acrylics are really good. They're really, really thick and really easy to handle. And the great thing is with the acrylic tiles, and this is not me trying to persuade you to buy them, uh, is that if they're in the bag, you know that these are not going to get marked. You can play this game for the next 5, 10, 15 years and they'll be fine. Whereas the cardboard tokens, you know, after lots of plays of cardboard tokens rummaging around in a the bag, they are going to get a bit damaged. Anyway, meanwhile, we've got a two and a five. There's a mine there. There's a mine. Surely I should take the mine. We've got these. But the white dice is a two. Two's rubbish. Hmm. Okay. There's a lot of good things here. I mean, I could put a two here. That gets me to take any tile I want to and take all of the goods from one space. That's pretty good. Yeah, that is, that is a pretty good space right there. That would, that would help me out. Except I can't take that because I've got this. <gasps> right. So yeah, the options are, I, I, I was thinking of taking the mine and then using the worker to place the mine, but then I've got no workers. I don't like not having workers. But I do want to grab that mine. So we're going to use the five to take the mine. Now, I'm going to do something different. I'm going to use the two to place the white castle there. And then the benefit of the white castle is that I do an action based on the white dice, which is a two. And I'm going to take two workers. Yeah, I'm actually going to take two workers with that action. Don't know if that was the right thing to do or not, but I've done it. Next round. Uh, do I have two coins? Hang on, I have two coins. Do I want to buy something? Oh, look at these tiles. Uh, that bank will pay for itself. Yep, I am. I am going to spend two coins and I'm going to buy a bank. Right. Next round. Place the good, place the good, place the good, place the good. It's a two. Goes there. Right. I've rolled a two and a four. He's rolled a six. So he's going to depot number six. We're looking for livestock first. Oh, he's taken the cows. You know, you can go off some octopuses. So he places the cows there. Now they're the first cows that he's got. So he gets four points. And it's on there, which means we look at that and he takes that. I am letting him get away with these vineyard tiles. Yeah, that was my last chance to take the cows. And this is one of the clever things with, um, and again, you know, giving the credit to John and Nick who designed the game, that they are based on the principles of David Turtz's 
solo mode designs, which is, if you look carefully, you can work out what the AI is likely to do. And I could have worked that out. I knew he was looking at this county card. I knew that the top left was going to be cows. And I knew that, oh, it was livestock. Oh, still. Yeah. <laughs> One of those things. One of those things. Right. So we've done that. He's got the cows. He's got the points. He's taken the vineyard. It's my go. I've got a two and a four. Right. I need to, I need to be starting to place these. Uh, and I can't place that. I can't place that. I mean, it, mm, we're going to have to use, we're going to have to use workers. So I am spending a worker. I'm going to change the, I'm going to change the two into a three and I'm going to place that mine there. That has completed a set of two, which is three points plus six, nine points. Let's move to 51. Then I'm going to use the four. Now, that's a carpenter's workshop. I've already got a carpenter's workshop in this town, so I can't have that in this town, but I could go down here and place it in another town. But I could take the boat instead. I'm going to take the boat. Right. That's it. Next round. Don't have two coins. Can't buy anything. Okay. It's a four. So this is going here. And we have a three and a four, and we have six. So he's looking for buildings, and he's going to start at depot six, and there is a building. So it goes on there. Now, that building is the warehouse. I think that's the warehouse. That is the warehouse, and he sells goods. Uh, so he sells that, gets one silver, gets two points. And that's it. That's it. Nothing else. Right, I've got a four and a three. So, we've got a boat. We can place the boat. Uh, we can place the boat there with a three. Perfect. So I get to take, I get to move ahead on turn order. So I'm now first and I get to take all of the goods of my choice from one of the depots. Now... I like to take goods of different types because there is one of the monastery tiles that scores you points at the end of the game for goods of different types. So I think, and you could also work out what's coming up, what you're going to get more of. I'm going to take these two. Got some shirts and I've got a wine glass. So I placed the boat, I moved up on there, I took the goods. Then I'm going to use the four to place a castle here. Okay, which has completed a size one region on phase C, so that's seven points. And I get a bonus action of anything I want. Anything I want. Anything at all that I want. Do we want to take a vineyard? Do we want to take a vineyard? I need to be taking vineyards. We know that. And I need to be doing more of them. So I am going to take a vineyard. It's a bonus action. It doesn't matter what I take. Right, that's it. Next round. And I'm not going to roll the yellow dice now because I'm going first. It's a five. Place the good, place the good, place the good. Five goes on there. And I've rolled a one and a two. So you only roll its dice on its turn. And I was rolling it earlier at the same time because it was taking the first turn. Right, we've got a one and a two. And I know where I want to place this because I want to make this set of yellow grapes as big as possible. So I think I'm going to put it here on, up on layer three, which I'm allowed to do. So that gets me to take all of the goods from one of the depots and to take any tile I want and add it to my storage. Yeah, and I'm going to finish this at some point. But right now, I think that is the best move for me because, yeah, I think so. So that uses a two. Yeah, the other option was that I'd go there for a one. But I want these yellow tiles to, I want the yellow grapes to be in a, in a, in a big clump. So what am I doing? I'm taking goods from a depot and taking any tile I want. So I'm going to take these goods. And... Any tile I want from anywhere. 
not not the black depot but anywhere else so we could take another boat or we could take this one this is a market which allows me to take a livestock or a ship when i place it of course um there's not actually much left i'm going to take this one i'm going to take the church yeah so we're taking the church Will there be board games at the wedding? Yes, we are taking a few party games for people to play in the evening. We're taking code names, uh, just one, so clover, and pictures is is what we're taking. Oh, and Rainbow Rage as well. Um, so yeah, we are taking a few a few games just for the evening for people to play because uh, there are going to be uh, a lot of uh, my friends there, and the only friends I have are gamers. Uh, I don't have any friends, and never have had any friends really outside of the gaming community. So uh, yeah, there'll be a few gamers there. Right. Are we done? Well, that was the two. I've lost track of where we're going now. What did I do? I did the two. I placed it there. I took the goods. I took the tile. I've still got the one. So we're going to use the one to place the bank there, which gets me two silver coins which I could use straight away, but I'm not going to. I'm not going to. I'm going to save those two silver coins. Yeah. Okay, right. Now we do Otto's turn. So Otto is looking for ship building, livestock building, starting at Depot 6. Nothing here, ship. So it takes the ship, puts it on there. It moves ahead on the turn order track. And it takes these two, because that's the depot with the most goods in it. Okay. And that's it. Yes, that's it. Right. Uh, next. Last round of phase C. We are more than halfway through. Oh, that was a five. No, it was a one. I rolled a one and a five. Uh, four. Depot four. Right. Okay. So... What do we need to accomplish this phase? I don't know. I want to save this church for next round when the monasteries come out. Uh, so and when the castle comes out, because that's going to allow me to take a castle, a monastery or a mine. So I could use that to take the extra mine. Um, we want this. I do want that and I want to put it there. And I can take that. I'm going to use the five to take it. And I could place it. I could, with the one, turn the one into a six and place it. But do I need to? I don't think I need to. But what am I going to do with the one otherwise? I'm not going to take anything else. Yeah, I'm going to, I'm, mm, yeah, I'm going to do it. So I'm going to turn a one into a six using a worker. And I'm going to place this on here because there's the six and I'm going to place it like that. So that gets me four points and it gets me the action of the white die. So the white die is a four. So I get to do an action of value four, which I could modify with workers. Um, do we want to take the carpenter's workshop? Maybe put it here. Maybe, maybe try and do a second town. That seems quite tricky to do or i could just sell this i'm going to sell that so i get one silver and two points there you go right that's it then we do otto's turn otto rolled a one so he's looking for a building and we start at depot one and there is a building so all sorts of things happen here he's taken a market now what happens when otto takes a market is he takes a livestock or ship and places it in the reserve. So starting at depot four, livestock or ship. No, 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 no. He takes that, puts it into his reserve. Then he's covered up a vineyard tile. There are no vineyard tiles available, so he doesn't get the bonus for that. But he has completed another county. Four points for the other half of your vineyard. Yeah, did I forget my four points? Thank you. Got my four points. Uh, unfortunately, Otto's just gained another 18. So he goes up to uh, 89. 
Another one done. And these move up. He's getting close. Right, he's halfway through collecting buildings now. Right, I think we're done. I think we're done with it turn. It doesn't have any coins. I could have spent two coins on my turn, but I didn't want to, or I forgot. And I think it should have gone first, shouldn't it? Yeah, I think I might have messed that up. I think it should have gone first. So apologies for that. I think I got that wrong. Anyway, clear the black market. Clear any other tiles. Clear any vineyard tiles. And let's set ourselves up for phase D. I have two mines, so I get two money. Otto has one mine, so he gets one money. Uh, what else do we need to do? We need to repopulate the board. Ooh, that's fantastic. And if you're wondering how this game is going to work with more players, because there isn't that many tiles on this board, this is the two player side of the board. So the other side is for three and four players, and you do have a lot more tiles available every round. Okay, what else do we need? Livestock. Cows. Just going to shout cows now every time the cows come up. Right. We need a mine, and we need two more boats. Are we all set up? I think we are all set up. I've done that, I've done that, I've done that, I've done that. And Otto is going first. So we are in phase D. Oh dear Thor. I rolled a three. So we're going to take this and we're going to put it in depot three. I rolled a two and a three. And right, so he's going to try and take a building first, starting at depot six. Is there a building in depot six? Yes, there is. So he takes that. <laughs> he puts it on there. He takes a vineyard. He takes the middle one because he rolled three on the white dice and he's placed a market tile. So he wants to take, um, let me just check that this is right because he's already got livestock in his reserve. So I don't think he takes another livestock. He takes a ship tile from the depot that matches the value on the white dice and places it in the reserve area. If there are no ship tiles on the board, resolve this effect for a livestock tile Oh no, it is just, he, he does that. And it can have multiple ones of the same type on here. So it will take a ship tile if there is one available. So starting at depot um, three. No, so it takes that ship tile. Oh no, in fact, it, yeah, okay. Ah, interesting, interesting. I just wanted to, to confirm this. The rule book says, it takes a ship tile from a depot that matches the value on the white dice and places it in the reserve area. If there are no ship tiles on the board, resolve this effect for a livestock tile. The player aid has them the other way around. So just be very careful. I'm actually going to make a note on mine um, because the player aid actually says livestock, livestock stroke ship. That should be ship stroke livestock. So yeah, there you go. Little, little tip. That player aid is not quite got it in the right order and i've just found that out uh right so where are we he's done that he took the market tile he took the vineyard that's it that's his turn right my turn i have a two and a three where are we where are we and what are we trying to do we are trying to score more points than him but that's not going to be easy now we do have a nice juicy space here for other stuff Yeah, I mean, potentially, we could put something in here. Uh, I don't, I didn't really want to block that off because potentially I could increase the size of this yellow grape area quite a lot. I could. by putting that in there, that might be quite nice. But, I don't actually have a yellow bonus tile yet. 
and I've only got one worker left. As I said about an hour ago, I'm not going to win this. It's still a fantastic game, and I love it, but I'm not going to win it. Three and a two. Any thoughts? What would you? What would Chuck Norris do? Looking at threes. Don't really want to take either. Of it. The cow's available, but it's on a six. Um, he's already had his turn. But he could be wanting to take that next turn. Uh, two and a three. Two and a three. Could take that, but there's no need because I can't really place it. I can't play this. Well, no. Does Otto move forward on the track because of the boat he took? Uh, no. No, anything taken in the reserve, he doesn't get any bonuses for. It's only when they're placed on, on the county cards. The reserve basically works like this area here, I think. Uh, what monastery tiles came out? So, yeah, the monastery tile, I should have looked at this. This is tile number five, which says, uh, I don't know. <laughs> Every time you take a boat, you can trade. When you place a ship, additionally take goods from one adjacent depot. Ah, yeah. Okay. Uh, also, this one, which is four points at the end of the game for every white castle that I have. Now, I can only have a maximum of two of those with this board because I've only got two towns. Um, and I don't know if any other white castle... Oh, there is a white castle there. I could actually just take that white castle with a three and then place it with a two. And then I'd do a bonus action of a three. Hmm. There's so many choices. So, so, so many choices. What are we gonna do? Two and a three is not great, is it? So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use the three No, hang on, hang on, hang on, hang on. I've got other ideas. Okay, I'm going to use the two. I'm going to take this vineyard, put it in here. Then I'm going to use the three, and I'm going to place this here. Gets me two silver. I'm just collecting silver. Uh, and I get to take either a blue or a green tile, and I'm going to take the cows. Yeah. That's what we're going to do. And then at the end of my turn, I am going to spend two coins and I am going to buy this boat tile. Yeah. Okay. That's what I'm going to do. Shifty's he's got to go. Thank you for watching. But we are all done. Right. That was a long round. I've got things to think about. Places to be. Things to do. It's a six. I've rolled a five and a three. So let's do the goods first. Goods go there. And now we're doing Otto's turn. And Otto is trying to fill this tile. Starting at depot three. We're looking for boat, monastery, building, boat. Takes this. Puts it there. That does two things. He takes that. Rats. Uh, and he also does a white castle action. Which was, remind myself. Takes the tile from the board and places it in the reserve. Starting depot is six. Takes the tile of a type it doesn't have. So it's basically taking that first. I think that's how that works. Let me just double check. Uh, takes a tile from the board and places it in his reserve. It uses the value on the white dice to determine the starting depot. It looks for the tile of a type it doesn't have in its reserve, prioritizing the leftmost type if tied. Um, if there are no tilers available, it goes clockwise around the board until a tile is found. So it's looking for a castle. And it starts in six and it goes around the board and it finds one here and it puts it in its reserve. I think that's right. So that's actually doing it in a slightly different way to when it takes tiles normally. But I think that's right. It looks for the tile of a type it doesn't have in its reserve. No, maybe I've got that wrong. Maybe 
And if I get this wrong, I'll put some Klingon subtitles on screen. Maybe we're starting at Depot 6 and we're looking for either of those tiles. Because these are wild tiles, which it hasn't, hasn't taken yet. And we did, we did take a wild tile in the game this afternoon. I can't remember how it takes a wild tile. Um... Oh, yeah, right. Okay. So, yeah, it could be that it starts at Depot 6 and it's looking for that. No, that. No. So then it goes to the next one. It's looking for Castle. Mine. No. So it goes to Depot 2. Oh, it's the same result. It's looking for a castle. So it's got that and it's put it in its reserve. There you go. Right. Okay. So, yeah, what did it do? It took this tile from here placed it on there, got the vineyard, activated the white castle bonus, which was to place a tile in its reserve. It's done. Right, I've got a five and a three. So, unfortunately, <laughs> yeah, he just took that. But never mind. It's all okay. I am going to place... can't take any more vineyards apart from that one which is of no use to me whatsoever well gets me some bonuses but i want green and yellow and red look at that my starting grape red rubbish um so i think i'm going to use the five to place this here now this is a church i can take either a castle there's none of those a monastery or a mine so there is a mine up there which will go down here later or I could take a monastery. Hmm. Yeah, I'm going to take this monastery. Right, and then we have a three. Now, what can I do with that three? I can't place any of these. So it's going to have to be a worker. Oh, that's rubbish. Yeah, so if we're going to be placing a worker, then what are we going to modify? Uh, no, let's put this one out. Let's change the three into a two with a worker. Place the boat with the five. Yeah, no, I decided to do that instead. So the three is going into a two. I'm placing a boat there, which moves me ahead in turn order. And I'm going to take... Uh, I can take those, but I'd lose one. I'm just going to take this one. Pop it there. Right, that's my go done. Next round, did I want to buy something from the market? Oh, and I think I forgot to buy something from the market for him. Apologies for that. I should have bought something from the market for him at the end of his turn, and he would have bought that. Yeah. Okay. Did I want to buy anything from the market? No, no, we're good. Right, next round. It's a two, which means that goes here. I rolled a one and a five, and now I'm going first. Uh, we don't need to roll it yet. So one and a five. I'm going to put the cows in there. Right. So that's the one. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten cows in that pasture. And it is a size four region, ten points plus four, so another fourteen. Let's move to 88. Done. Happy with that. Next, we have a five. I think I'm going to take the mine. Yeah. And then do I want to buy anything? Problem is, buying things at this stage... No, I am. I'm going to spend two coins. And we're going to buy the castle. Okay, there you go. Took a boat and the goods from Depot 5. Did I? But it, 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 is that you can take the goods from any depot. Yeah, when you place a boat, what, what, have, what have I done wrong? <laughs> Did I do something wrong? You took a boat and took the goods from Depot 5. I thought I, I, thought I took the goods from here. Yeah. I'm not sure what I've done wrong there. I'm, I may have done something wrong.
yeah, I don't know. I, I can't even remember what I've done this turn. Let me know if that's right. Let me know if I've done something wrong there. I think I'm good. Thank you, John. Uh, and now we do Otto's turn. Otto is looking for livestock and buildings, starting at Depot 1. No livestock, but there is a building. And it is a carpenter's house, a carpenter's workshop. So when he draws a carpenter's workshop, he takes a building tile and places it into the reserve. Okay? And it's probably based on the white dice and going clockwise. Yeah. Value on the white dice and clockwise. So value on the white dice is two. So he starts here, takes that building, puts it into his reserve. Okay, and that's it. It's not complete. It's not complete. Right, end of the round. Next round. I'm still first. It's a three, which means that goes there. And I've rolled a three and a five. Okay, so three and a five. I've got no workers. Having no workers is tricky. It means you're at the mercy of the dice. We also need to get another building in there. I'm going to have to take workers with one of these, aren't I? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to have to take workers. So I use the three to take two workers. Then I spend one worker on turning the five into a six. And I get to place this castle here. So that gets me one point plus four. So I get five points. And I get a bonus action of anything I want. What bonus action do we want? I mean, there's not much available. But I know he wants boats for this. Although I know he's going to be doing this this turn. So I could take the sheep, but then he would just take those sheep instead of those, instead of those. Um, this is not even the last round for this phase. I'm going to take the boat. Yeah, I'm going to take the boat. Right. And then Otto's turn. It's a two. So he is... Apologise for the rabble noise outside. I've got the window open just because it's quite warm in here still. Uh, but we do have the Columpton Massif outside. So, uh, starting at depot number two, it's looking for livestock. No livestock, but there is here. So it takes that, puts it on here. We are trading. We're trading those two tiles. It gets a silver. It gets four points. We're tied on points. But now... It's got two points for the pigs and another two points for up there. So it's four points for the pigs. And then it's completed this for another 18 points, putting it on 115. We'll just remember that it's... There, there are counters in the game if you get more than 100, but we'll just remember that it's got more than 100. That slides down. That goes there. That is the end of that round. And now we go into the final round of phase D. There's only one more phase after this. Uh, roll a two on the white dice, which means that is going there. Okay, so I've got a four and a six. And I have a worker. So, I am gonna use, mm. Uh, but if I do that, and then that, and then that, <laughs> that doesn't work. Yeah, four and a six is not good. Uh, so I could play the boat. But then what would I do with the six? I'd have to take more workers, which is terrible. I could play the monastery with a four. And then the boat, yeah, okay, we'll do that. We'll use the four to place that monastery there. Then we'll use the six modified uh, by a worker to make it into a five to place that there. So what that does is it moves me one up on here. I take all of the goods from one depot. I'm gonna take that one. And I've completed an area of size four on phase D, so that's another 14 points. So seven plus seven. 
and then I could buy something at the end of my turn if I wanted to. I'm not sure that I do. No, not going to buy. So Otto's final turn for phase D and he's rolled a five. So he's going to depot five and he's looking for boats or monasteries. There's a monastery. So it goes on there and that's it. It's absolutely it. All done. Right. That's the end of phase D. We clear any remaining tiles. Wow. This is going so different from the game this afternoon. There was a lot of tiles to clear. I'm, I'm doing terrible with vineyards. The, the vineyard thing for me has not worked out at all. I've, I've played badly. Mistakes have been made. These things we know. And if I had more time, I would be playing this again straight away. Because this has just inspired me to play again and play better. Okay, let's populate those. What do we need? Monasteries. The final two monasteries. Now it comes out. And the Black Depot. There's the one we want. Two points for each different good that I have shipped at the end of the game. And I've shipped four different types at the moment. So that's quite nice. Right. Money. I've got two mines. He's got one mine. I'm going first. Final round of the game. Off we go. Have we all set up? I think we're all set up. So it's a six, which means... Oh no, I haven't done these. Oh gosh, look at all them. So that goes uh, there. And then I've rolled a one and a six. Right, well, what are we going to do with the one and the six? So, vineyards. <laughs> the thing that I should have been doing from ages ago. But there's so many options here. There is a monastery tile there that I do want. And it is quite good for me. But a mistake at this point is very costly because there's not going to be any more tiles coming out. I could just buy that vineyard. But is that vineyard any good to me whatsoever? Yes, it is. Oh, I'd have to take workers. I'd have to take workers with another dice to place it. But I'm going to. I'm, I'm going to do it. So I'm going to spend two silver to buy this. I'm then going to use the one to take two workers. And then I am going to use one of the workers to turn the five, the six into a five. And we're going to place this. We're going to place it on here. So what that gets me is that gets me to take a building and to take a vineyard. Which is not ideal because I can't do both. But I'm going to do it anyway. So that's going to go on there. And I can either take the vineyard or I can take the building. But if I take the building, I'd then be discarding it. But at least then Otto wouldn't get it. So, yes, that's what I'm going to do. I am going to take this building and put it on here. Then I'm going to take a vineyard and I'm going to take this one. And I'm going to replace that building with the vineyard, which means that building has been destroyed. So I'm done. Okay, Otto. It's a four. So he starts at depot four and he's looking for a monastery. No, building. Yes, takes a building. It goes on there. He takes a vineyard and it's that one. Uh, then, because he's placed a market, it is the opposite of what it says on here. It's a ship tile. Is there a ship tile starting at depot six? Yes, he takes the ship tile, puts it on his reserve. And then at the end of his turn, he spends two silver. And what's he going to buy? Um, I think he's trying to buy. Purchase a hex from the Duffo. Well, attempt to purchase a tile it doesn't have. So mine. No, there are no mines there. It will still purchase. If multiples are, uh, 
Multiple tiles of the same type are available. It picks the leftmost one starting from the topmost row. So it says it will purchase a hex tile from the Black Depot for two silver coins. It will attempt to purchase a tile of a type it doesn't have. Prioritizing the topmost. It doesn't say. So I will need confirmation on this. Oh, I should have one worker. Thank you. Um, I'm not sure what it would do in this situation. Because the only tile that it doesn't have in its reserve is the mine, and there are no mines in there. So I'm not quite sure what it does. It says at the end of the Shatoma's turn, if it has at least two silver coins, which it did, it will purchase a hex tile from the Black Depot for two silver coins and place the purchase tile in its reserve. It will attempt to purchase a tile of a type it doesn't have in its reserve, prioritizing the topmost, then leftmost if tied. If multiple tiles of the same type are available in the Black Depot, it will pick the leftmost one starting from the top row. Imagine it was that way up. So yeah, I'm not sure. Uh, so William is saying that you would have the Autumn purchase in this situation. Would it buy a yellow tile as it's after the mine? Uh, I'm, I'm not sure. I'm, I'm not sure what it would do. So what we're going to do is, and this might be right, might be wrong. Uh, we'll need to ask this question uh, from the solo designer and get an answer later. But I'm going to say that it prioritizes where it doesn't have one. When it does have one, it's going to prioritize the one that it's got the least of. So is there any castles? No, but there is a monastery. So I'm going to have it by the monastery tile. But yeah, I don't know if that's right. It, I'm, I'm, the, the other option is that it, it would potentially skip and not buy. But we're done. We are done. Right. Round 21, 22, round 22. It's a one. So that's going there. I rolled a one and a five. And it's my go. So we've got this. Now. Now, <laughs> I think I'm going to put it on here. I am going to use that worker. Oh, now. Mm. Yes. We're going to use the worker to turn the five into a six. And they're going to place this on here. So this is the, the top level of my vineyard. You need a six to go there, but I get to do any action with it and I get to do and I get four points. So I'm putting that there. I'm going to get my four points. and I'm going to get to do any action I want to. And the action I'm going to do is I'm going to take this. And then I'm going to use the one to place this here. Now, what that gets me is it gets me two silver coins. It gets me to take a building. Uh, of any type so we'll take this one i think i want this one what does this one do this is the town hall place an additional tile yeah we'll take that one so i'll take the town hall and i have now completed my lowest level oh and i've also completed my upper level so yeah if you look at your if you look at my thing i've now completed level four so it's completed as soon as you put a tile on and i've completed level one so what that means, I'm going to take two new bonus tiles. So I'm going to take a green bonus tile because that's obviously going to be the most valuable points for me. And you might think, well, why don't I just take another green one? Well, if you have multiple bonus tiles of the same color, you cannot choose the same area twice. So I'm going to choose yellow one. So at least now this green area is scoring and this yellow area is scoring. Brian is saying, use one to complete the bottom row to get the yellow grape. So if I'd have done it a different way, but then, then that would have been down there. And then I wouldn't have got the bonus go. Yeah, no, I think I still need, I think I needed to do that in order to do that whole thing that I've just done. And do I want to spend two silver at the end of my turn to buy something? I don't know. At this stage, I'm thinking not. 
No, I'm not going to. Right, Otto's turn. To six. So he starts at depot six. He's looking for boats. Boats? No, 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 no. Yes. Takes a boat, puts it there. Instantly trades that one. Gets two points. Gets a coin. Doesn't complete his board. He doesn't have two coins. But he's placed a boat, which means he moves to there. And he takes all of these. Ah. Nice, juicy trade goods. Okay. That's it. He's now first in turn order. So we go into the pre-penultimate round. Which is totally a word. Uh, that goes there. I've rolled a one and a four. He's rolled a one. So he's looking for a boat. It's the only thing he needs. There's no boat. So he goes to his reserve and he finds a boat and he puts it on there. So all sorts of things happen. He takes this. He moves ahead in the turn order. He takes a vineyard tile. There isn't one available, so he can't. He's completed the area. He gets 18 points, puts him up to 135. Oh, he's so close to completing boats. That's gone. That shuffles down. That goes there. Okay, my go. I have a one and a five. Sorry, a one and a four. <laughs> Grunting noises. I needed that boat. I mean, there's a boat there. I can buy the boat, but then I can't place the boat because I haven't got any workers. Really short of workers in this game. And I need to get that in there, but that's a six. Can't do any more on the vineyards. No, the vineyards is done. That That is it. There's no more vineyards available. Uh, right. What can we do down here? Are we even going to complete any sets? I don't know if we are. It's embarrassing. Really embarrassing. Okay, so I'm going to place this town. I'm going to use the one. I'm going to place this town hall here. And the bonus of placing a town hall is I just place anything else with any number. Um, yeah, place a tile from the reserve. So that's a mine that has completed an area of size one on phase E is three points, but I am the first player to complete mines. So I get another five. Right, okay, that's the mines done. I'm happy. The thing that I wanted to do at the start of the game, I've done at the end of the game. We now have a four and there is very little I can do with that four. I can't take anything. I can't sell anything. So I'm going to have to use it to take two workers. If you end up using actions to take two workers, you don't want to be doing that more than once in the game. And I've done it three times. So the penultimate round. Off we go. Yeah, it's good that the Autumn is, is is difficult to beat. And this isn't even on the hardest difficulty level. So yeah, I'm happy with this. This, this makes it more replayable for me because I just want to play it again and again and again and keep trying to get better and better at it. So it's a three. That's going in there. And what's it doing? It's going to depot two and it's looking for monasteries. It's got a monastery. It goes on there. It sells those and gets six points. Six points and a silver. And it then spends the two silver and it takes so mines it's got two buildings so it's going to take the boat that that's that's the way we're playing it it might be wrong i will need to check uh later on but that's that done my go i've got two fours and i have two workers I mean, I need to finish that. If I don't finish that, then that's an embarrassment to me, my family, everybody, if I don't finish that. I mean, I will be able to finish that. I, I, I will be able to. I'm going to spend two coins to buy this market. But I want to do it cheaply. 
and I'm not sure if I'm going to be able to. What am I going to do with two fours? That's awful. I don't want to go into the last round with no workers, because then you are completely at the mercy of the dice. But also, I mean, two fours is just horrendous. Yeah. Yeah, that, that is pretty terrible. I don't know what to do with two fours. I really don't. I'm going to use a worker to change one of them to a five to sell these. Gets me four points. Gets me a silver. I want this. Yeah. And I'm going to use the other one to take two workers. Yeah, this game's just gone horribly wrong for me. Right. Last round of the game. Off we go. It's a three. Which means that goes there. Look at that. Right, so what's he doing? He's going to Depot 4, and he's looking for animals and monasteries. No, animals and monasteries, yes. Takes the monastery, puts it there, cannot take a vineyard, it doesn't complete the tile. Whew. My go, I've got a four and a five. It's just going from bad to worse. So I spend a worker to make the five into a six, I place this here, which completes that town. It's a size six town completed in phase E. I get 23 points. Yay, I'm winning <laughs> for now. And also that allows me to take a ship or a livestock. I'll take a livestock. And... And I've got a four left. And I've got two workers. So I could put this into there and get three points. Or I could sell that for six points. Although they're worth one each if you've still got them left at the end. So actually that's a net gain of three points plus one for this. It's a net gain of four points. That's a net gain of three points. So we're going to keep these nice pigs. And we are going to spend... Although two workers is also a point. So it, it's... Yeah. <laughs> Buy the building with silver and plate? No. Spend the two workers, turn the four into a two. I can't buy this and place it. Or can I? Hang on, hang on. Let's just undo this. So what was it? It was a five. It was a four and a five. And I think I had three workers. And I've placed that there. Okay, I can do it. I can do it. I'm going to do it in a slightly different order. So I, I use two workers to take that. And then I use my remaining worker to place that. And then the bonus action is to place that. So that's all still the same. But what I have done is I have claimed another three points and I've completed all of my castles, which is another five. Yep. I think that's right. But I haven't completed all of the buildings. I'd need to complete all two towns. And Mac has just said, yeah, could I buy the castle and use the bonus to place the final town? Which, which, which is what I've done. So there we go. It's been awesome. It's been great. Shall we just not bother with the final scoring? <laughs> Okay, so final scoring for me. Uh, one point for every coin that I have. One, two, three, four. One point for every two workers. No, one point for every good that I have left. And I think that's it.
my vineyard scoring. So I use my green grape tile. One, two, three, four, five, six. 21 points. I use my yellow scoring tile for a set of four, which is 10 points. And then I use my red one for a set of two, which is three points. So that's the vineyard scoring. Okay. Now, oh, and I've also got a monastery that gives me four points for each white castle. And I have one white castle. So I've got 200 points. Exactly 200 points. I forgot the tiles for completing an area. No, 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 I did. Yeah, I completed my castles, which got me that, and I completed my mines that got me that. I haven't completed anything else. I haven't completed my boats, my livestock, my towns. I've completed one town, but you need to complete both of your towns. So, yeah, I think I got it right. I think so. So, final scoring for Shatoma. It gets four points for every face-up monastery in its duchy or incomplete county card. So it's got one, two, three, four, five monasteries. 20 points. Okay. One point for each unsold good. It has three unsold goods. One point for each silver coin. It has no silver coins. One point for each hex in its reserve. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Two points for every hex tile on incomplete county cards. Six. And then it gets points for its vineyards. So it has <laughs> one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, which is 66 points. One, two, three, four, five, six, and another 60 puts it on. Uh, what's that? 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. 244 plays 200. Now, I said at the start, I'm not going to win this. I did, I did okay. But, yeah. Uh, this afternoon, I lost in my practice game this afternoon. Uh, I think he scored 220 and I scored 180. So I lost by about 40 points this afternoon. But, yes, the Automa gets points based on how many vineyard tiles it has collected and it collected 11 of them we knew that it was collecting a lot uh near the start there you go uh castles of burgundy is a fantastic game it, it is undeniably i mean there are people out there who are um who who are wrong in that they don't like it so the, those people are wrong it's just a scientific fact the game is a fantastic game now to be honest being serious for a minute, I can see why some people don't like this. Um, but for me, mechanically, it's fantastic. So many tiny little crunchy little decisions that all have a big impact. Um, lots of planning ahead. Sure, you've got the dice, but it was the it was the gameplay mistakes I think tonight that that cost me the game. The dice were a little bit against me at various points, but I was run a bit dry on workers. And obviously doing a live stream, uh, I'm concentrating on that. So I don't have the full brain power um, to be able to cope with it. But as I say, I, I would definitely happily play this again. I'm going to leave it set up here. Um, in fact, I might I might sneak an extra game in tomorrow night since I'm going to be on my own from like 9.30 tomorrow night. I might sneak an extra game of it in um, because I've thoroughly enjoyed this. This has been this has been really good. We're two hours tonight, but I think you could probably play this in about an hour. If, if I was just, you know, getting on with it, you could probably play it in about an hour. Right, we're all done. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you very much for keeping me company tonight. Thank you very much for all of the well wishes for Friday. Hope everything, I hope everything goes okay. Uh, if I don't do anything more, I will let you know just very quickly. I have two more videos that are going live this week. Now, those videos are already done. So if you're thinking, wait a minute, why is Paul still doing videos when he's getting married? I have two videos which are all done. They are all ready to go. That is the how to play video for Voidfall and my uh, best games of the month video log where I don't talk about this because that video was filmed last night. Uh, well, Tuesday night. Yeah, last night. Um, so those videos are going live on my channel in the next couple of days if you're interested in, in either of those. Uh, but I'll be back next week with some more content for you. Um, 
yeah, big thank you to everybody for joining me, as I say tonight. A huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters for making the channel possible. Uh, and if you like the content that I create and you want to support me on Patreon, you can do it at patreon.com forward slash gaming rules. I will say that, however, this was a sponsored video. Awaken Realms have commissioned me to create this video showing off the solo game with the vineyards. And next Friday, I've got people coming over. We're going to be doing a four player game of this with the vineyards. So that's happening on this channel live next Friday, eight o'clock. If you're interested in seeing a four player game of this with the vineyards expansion. Right, I'm going to go downstairs and pack. Thanks very much. Take care. I'll see you all soon. Bye-bye.